Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, and I will teach you to speak English powerfully, speak confidently, live fully, and never stop learning. Welcome to the Effortless English Show. Let's get started. My guest today is Charlie from France. Charlie is one of our VIP members and a longtime member of Effortless English, and I will be talking to him in just a few minutes. So first let me talk about a uh, success strategy that I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, which is journaling, writing in a journal. had some questions about journaling, and uh, I thought I would talk a little more about it and how you can use journals to you know, really get more success, more motivation, more energy in your life for all different things. So, of course, a journal, it's like a diary. It's just a notebook. Here's mine. It's right here. So, I just, I buy lots of these. I buy them all the time. So, one of these, I usually fill it in one month. So, I'm writing every day in this little book. It's just empty pages. You can find them cheaply. You can get any, any, anywhere, like a little, uh, you know, uh, art store. I sometimes get sketchbooks, things like that. And, uh, I write in it every day. You can do this in English if you want to practice your English writing, which be that would be great. Or you could write it in your own language. Now the difference again, I, I mentioned before, the difference between a journal and a diary. A diary is kind of a record, a record of your life. You're just talking about, oh, today I did this. Today I went to the store. Today I had a good day. Today I had a bad day. That's, that's a diary. Nothing wrong with a diary. Write a diary if you enjoy it. That's fine. But a journal is uh, different. A journal is focused on your dreams, your big goals, your deepest values, what's most important to you in life. So the power of a journal, writing in your journal every day, the power comes from focusing every day on what is most important to you. That's why it's powerful, because every day it becomes a habit of thinking about the most important things in your life. It's important because in our modern lives, it's easy to be distracted, right? You get busy with your job, you get busy with your families, you get busy with school, you get busy with all the little things that are necessary, but they're less meaningful, less important, perhaps. And because of this, because you get busy and you become distracted, it can become easy to sort of forget your big dreams, forget your big goals. This happens to many, many people in life. So the power of the journal, again, is, to, is that it focuses you each day, helps you to remember what's most important. What are your big dreams? What are your goals? What are you trying to do with your life? What's most meaningful to you? And you just write. You can. I, I write for hours sometimes every day, but you could just... Pick a time period, you know, 30 minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, whatever time you have. That's your personal time, so just think about what's most important to you. Now, I had a question today on Twitter about, you know, how to make that a useful process, how to actually do it. What do you write? Well, you could start with questions. I like to use power questions, questions that make you think more powerfully. And you could just write answers to these questions every day. For example, you could say, how can I improve more? You write that at the top of your journal. How can I improve more? Every day you write your answers to that question. So every day you're trying to think of more and more ways you can improve. Improve what? Well, that's your decision. Focus on your goals. Maybe you're focused on English, so you might say, how can I improve my English more? And then every day you're writing down your ideas of how you can make, make more improvements with your English. Maybe you're focused on health. 
You might write every day, how can I improve my health? And just keep writing down your answers, writing down your ideas. And each day you'll get more and more and more ideas about how to improve. You could uh, focus on gratitude. You could say, what's great in my life already? That's another powerful question. And Every day you write your answers to that. Every day you remember what is already great in your life. And I do this one a lot, and I find it very helpful. I do both of those questions a lot. Uh, you could write the question, what is most important to me in life? What is most important? And again, every day you write a page or two pages answering that question. And you'll go deeper and deeper every day. Keeps you focused on your most important values. And you can think of your own powerful questions. Each day you can answer the same questions, or each day you could answer a different power question. Just make this a habit every day. You will see the power of it. All right. Let's go now to Charlie, our guest. So Charlie is from France. He actually made uh, the introductory music for the show. I didn't use it today, uh, but I'm going to get a better computer set up soon, and I'll use that intro music again for the show. He, he wrote and performed that music. He is a longtime member of Effortless English and a VIP member of Effortless English. So. Charlie from France is going to talk about, you know, how he learned to speak English well, to speak English powerfully. So let's go to Charlie and let me get Charlie on here. Let's see, show the broadcast. And okay, Charlie, hello, are you there? Oh, still need to unmute your. Uh, just need to unmute you. Hello, hello, Charlie, are you there? You may need to do this on your side, Charlie. You may need to find a button where you can unmute. Um, hello again? Yeah, oh. yeah. Hi, how's there it going? Go. There you go, we got you. Hey, how's it going? All right, so apparently it's working. <laughs> it seems to be working. It's working, yeah. So how did I get started on this journey? <laughs> Uh, basically, uh, I was in my first year in college studying English, and well, sure, I was doing well on the tests, you know, grammar, uh, that kind of thing, but I quickly realized that I had a really hard time understanding native speakers and TV movies and stuff because I wasn't used to hearing that kind of thing, um, so. Because I was a student, you know, I didn't have a lot of money to spend on tons of programs. I began to browse the internet for free material, and I did a few podcasts like uh, the Bob and Rob Show, ESL Pod, which I still do now and then because it's kind of great. It's very pragmatic, and so I, I still like to to mix a few podcasts together now and then. Keeps me going. Uh, and then I found a weird podcast named the Effortless English Podcast. And the host of the podcast, A.J. Hogue, I think you guys know him. Uh, <laughs> uh, he had some very interesting ideas uh, about language acquisition, uh, saying that the systems, the methods that most schools actually use fail the students instead of helping them become fluent uh, I totally agreed. <laughs> uh, besides, uh, I, AJ, I like your thinking because you were talking about things like being a vegetarian, which I was at the time and still am to this day. Um, I, I, you know, uh, I just felt a kind of connection and I wanted to learn more, so I got your free podcasts. Um, what I liked even more was the very first concept that you introduced back then, the phone conversations uh, that you had with your friend from Canada who actually owns Flow English. 
Uh, you were talking about how you would have to bring your own videos on the plane because they weren't even playing videos anymore, and you, you called them stingy bastards, so I remember that. <laughs> 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 and then you were talking in another phone conversation with your sister who got lost on the, on the road, you know, going home. And I thought that this concept was great, so after sitting on the fence for a while, I decided to buy the lessons. Um, several months later, towards uh, May or June, I don't remember exactly, uh, Learn Real English came out. And I was so stoked because I wanted this kind of lesson, you know. Uh, phone conversations, I mean, how many programs online sell that kind of thing. I, I don't know any other program then other than learn real English. Yeah. So I pretty much I pretty much milk milk the lessons dry. <laughs> I would listen to them every single day for hours, like four plus hours. Uh, I bought an MP3 player just for that purpose to listen to uh, the learn real English lessons and I would listen to them on net uh, on the loop hours and hours on end, and that's really when I started to notice a big, but big improvement in my speaking because uh, I was able to speak more naturally, and sure enough, I was starting to understand movies and native speakers uh, without having to, to turn on the subtitles all the time uh, when watching a movie, for example. Um, then. I applied for an internship in Los Angeles, California, and that was actually part of my studies. Uh, because the interview went really, really well, uh, I got the job. And I went there, I had an amazing time. It was actually hard to come back here because I felt, I felt home in Los Angeles. I, I felt home in California, and coming here didn't feel like coming home. It, f it felt like, oh, what the hell am I doing here? I'm in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what I'm doing here. I want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, then I, I, I kept going. You know, you created the VIP membership program, and well, I joined. And I, what I really like about it is that we're not focusing on English anymore. Sure, we have the lessons, but uh, we're learning about great topics like uh, confidence, assertiveness, all this kind of thing that you you need in everyday life, and that's I think that's the best way to learn English because you for, you're actually forgetting about all the linguistic side of the language. You know, uh, you're you're just focusing on what you want to learn, what you want to get, um, the information, the contents, not the envelopes, you know, not not the uh, the package, <laughs> but what's actually important, the message, uh, and that's what I've been doing in other areas of my life, like martial arts, uh, more recently music. I've been learning a lot of things thanks to English because I have books and videos and stuff on that in English. But I'm never thinking for a second, oh, I'm studying new vocabulary. No, I, I'm just learning about you know, self-defense or physiology, any kind of stuff that I might be interested in. Uh, but that's what you've been introducing for the last, well, when did you start the VIP program again? I think uh, you started it. VIP program's been three, three and a half years, something like that, I think. Wait. Is that right? It might have been in 09. Nine. Oh, so, wow, four and a half years. Yeah, time oh. flies. <laughs> 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 so, you actually introduced the concept with Power English, and then you developed it in the VIP lessons because you're really more focusing on uh, what you can do with English and not just, uh, well, these are the new words you're going to be learning this month and listen to them again and again and, you know, see you next month. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's about all I have to say about the best way to improve your English is just 
do English and not learn it and not think about it, you're you just get it done, you know, like Larry the cable guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You you get things done, you know. You you just open a book, or, um, play a DVD, or talk to native speakers, and my cat wants to come in. Okay, we can say hi to the cat. Well, she's um. dumb. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't know what she wants, so whatever. Um, I don't even know what I was saying. You're just saying, just you know, the way. So kind of to sum it up, the, the is is to focus on, you know, just just learning in English and and enjoying yeah. English and not focusing on the grammar, the vocabulary, and all that. Yeah, stuff. I, I I mean, I personally think that it's okay to learn about linguistics and all this stuff once you're fluent. And only if you have to, or if that's your thing, you know. Some people like math, right, Julia? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Uh, I hate math. I'm never gonna open a math book and just because, oh, I want to learn about uh, calculus and that. No, oh. <laughs> get that out of my way. <laughs> but if that's your thing, do it. But first of all, become fluent. You know, uh, you want things to be to become intuitive you don't want to have to think about them too much um, and once you do that then all the rules and stuff it's gonna make a lot more sense because um, you you will have a feel for correctness and I think that's the key word a feel for correctness you know uh, knowing what sounds right what sounds wrong and then if you want to know the why's and how's well, you can have all the fun you want, but that's not the main purpose of learning English. Yeah. Well, that's great. Thank, thanks so much. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's, it's really great, all the things you've done, and going to Los Angeles, that's, that's fantastic. Well, thank you for having me. Um, uh, I hope everybody's having a good time, and I'll talk to you later. Okay, good talking to you, Charlie. Bye. See you again. <laughs> Bye for now. Okay, so that was Charlie from France. I would like to point out a few um, main ideas that he mentioned. He mentioned a lot of great things. Uh, but I think his overall point that the way to learn English, to be fluent in English, to speak English powerfully, is to just you know, enjoy understanding and using the language. Not to focus on linguistics. Linguistics is, is the, the academic, the kind of school focus on the parts of the language, especially grammar. That is a separate academic subject, a separate subject for people to study. Is it interesting? I don't know. Some people find it interesting and others find it very boring. But the point is, linguistics will not help you speak better. It will not help you. Noam Chomsky, one of the most famous linguists in the world, uh, PhD uh, from MIT, uh, probably the number one grammar expert for languages, that grammar knowledge he has does not help him speak lots and lots of languages. He's looking at it as a scientist, looking at the different parts of, of all languages and what how the grammar is similar. That's fine if you want to study that, but it will not help you speak English better. This is the problem schools have. It's the problem of learning the school way. They think that studying grammar will help you learn to speak English. It will not. It's like try, studying physics to be a good football player, a good soccer player. Is physics an interesting subject? Yes, it is. Will it help you play soccer better? No, it will not. Not at all. To play soccer, to play football well, you have to just go out there and play and practice and use it, you, you know, playing against other people. And, but physics and mathematics will not help you with football. And, and it's the same thing. English is, is more like a sport. It's a skill you do. It's a skill you use in the real world. It's not a, a subject to study and think about. And the more you think about it, the grammar and all of that, the worse your speaking becomes because you're thinking so much, you can't let the words just come out. 
and you don't get that feeling for correctness that Charlie mentioned. That's how you must actually master English grammar. You must get a feeling for correctness. That's how I, as an American, a native speaker, know if grammar is right or wrong when I speak. Just, does it sound right to me? If it sounds right, then I know it's usually correct. If it sounds wrong, then I know it's usually wrong. I'm not thinking about verb tenses. I'm not thinking about all the rules for using articles and all that other stuff that schools teach. And not just me, any native speaker of English. Same with children. Children learn English so easily because they learn it completely naturally through listening. They do not study grammar rules. Okay, so anyway, it's a good point, good point. Well, now it's our favorite time of the day, our favorite time of the show. Let me get comfortable because it's time to answer your Twitter questions. So on Twitter, get on my Twitter account. It's AJ Hogue. Twitter is A-J-H-O-G-E. And I will answer your Twitter questions. So let's get on to Twitter now. Okay. Looks like some people were having a lot of problems watching it, that it was frozen. Okay, so let's see. So if you have a Twitter question, if you're if you can see the show, if it's not having problems, then uh, you can write your questions on my Twitter. It's twitter.com slash A J Hoag, A J H O G E. And let's go to Twitter and see what your questions are. Okay, let's see a comment from 1947 Roswell. Uh, he says, "Let me say." He's talking to Charlie. Let me say that your way of speaking is wow. Um, he says, I deal with French folks every day, uh, but they can't speak English as well as you. Congratulations. Yeah, I agree. Charlie speaks very well, very naturally, uh, very effortlessly. You can tell when Charlie is speaking English, he's not thinking about grammar. Uh, uh, uh. So many people, when I meet them, when they try to speak English, they're thinking about, I can tell they're thinking, because I say, hi, how are you doing? You know, where are you going? And, and instead of just answering me, they, I can, they, they stop and they start, their eyes go up, which shows they're, they're trying to remember things. And they're, they start, they're, they're thinking, they're worrying about grammar rules, they're trying to uh, find some certain vocabulary word. Uh, uh, but, and what happens is they sound like this. Uh, uh, mm, uh, 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 uh. And this is how a lot of people speak English, unfortunately. This is what happens to me with Spanish. When I try to speak Spanish, same problem because I learned Spanish a little bit in high school, in school. And when I try to speak Spanish, uh, 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 same problem. I start thinking uh, immediately, the first thing I think about are, are the verb tenses. Present tense, past tense. How do you do past tense in Spanish? Uh, and then I just, I can't get anything out. Terrible. So this is a very unnatural way to learn, and we don't want to do that. Okay. Uh, oh, Halibra San says, where's Tomoe? Show you where Tomoe is. One second. <laughs> That's my wife, Tomoe. Hello. Can you Hello. see her? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so Tomoe is here in San Francisco with me. Okay. So we. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the show we are now in San Francisco. We are live from San Francisco, and uh, we will be here for several months visiting friends and uh, doing work and all kinds of things. So, San Francisco, here we are. Um, one second. So, in San Francisco, uh, we are now in a, a, an apartment we're renting just for a couple weeks. So, um, that's why the internet connection, I wasn't sure if it would be good enough. I, don't, I still don't know if it's good enough right now, but... Uh, we'll see. Hopefully the recording was good. All right, more Twitter questions. Twitter questions. Okay. Okay, um, Alina Konst asks, uh, where can we see your new lessons? Do you have new lessons coming? So, yes, I do have some new lessons coming. Um, our original course is basically ready to be open again. This, this is the first course I ever made. Uh, 
uh, how many years ago? 2006. Uh, and then we stopped selling them for a while. Now we're selling them again. Basically ready. We just have a few little internet, I mean, a few little website bugs to fix. I think they're almost fixed now. Uh, hopefully next week we should be selling them. I think actually we've done some test sales already. We've had a few sales, but I'll be announcing it to everyone very soon. There is also the English Presentations Power Course. This is for giving public speeches uh, and presentations to groups. It's a good course, really fantastic, I think. I love doing public speaking. I love speaking to groups. I love speaking to really huge, big groups. And I know a lot of people are scared about giving a presentation, standing in front of people, talking in English is very scary to some people. But a lot of people must do this in their jobs especially. So we made a course for this. We, myself and uh, Aaron Campbell, one of my friends, who's also an English teacher. And uh, <laughs> so this course is finished. The course has been finished a long time. But the website's not finished. We're having problems with our web designer. Uh, which is common, unfortunately. So we're just waiting for the website to get programmed and finished. And it's frustrating for us because the course has been ready a long time. And uh, we're just, so we're just waiting. And I don't know how long it will be now. So I, hopefully in the next month, that course will be ready soon. Effortless English presentations. And there's also businessenglishconversations.com. I don't know if if you that's a fairly new course that was opened uh, about a year ago last year. That's my dad, my father, and I teaching about business English. Businessenglishconversations.com. All right. So, and then there's some more I'm working on as well, but I'll talk about them later because they're not quite ready. Okay. Back to your Twitter questions. Okay. This is a nice question. It's a common question. Jack. Jakub Jaworski10 says, do you think that practicing English with non-native speakers is a good way to learn English? So a non-native speaker is someone who did not, not learn English as a child. So a native speaker, that would be someone from the uh, United States, Canada, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, some in South Africa, some in India. Uh, these are people who grew up as babies learning English. That's a native speaker. And then a non-native is someone who learned it later as a foreign language. Is it useful to practice English with non-native speakers? Yes. Let me tell you how to practice with non-native speakers. You need native speakers. But for native speakers, you just mostly need listening. Okay, Listening to native speakers. That means audios, effortless English lessons, Podcasts, Charlie mentioned several podcasts he listens to. When you're more advanced, you can listen to TV shows and movies, audiobooks, all of these things, listening to native speakers, Americans, Canadians, Brits, Aussies, Kiwis, New Zealanders, all, all that's great. So when you listen, focus on listening to native speakers, then you'll get You'll get those natural phrases. You'll get that natural grammar. You will get uh, the pronunciation. All that's great. So for listening practice, which is most of your practice, one hour or more every day, native speakers, definitely. Now, when you want to just practice speaking yourself, you just want to get more comfortable using English and talking, then yeah, na non-native speakers are fine. Find other members of Effortless English and do a Skype chat with them. Or in your local town, maybe you have other people who are learning English. Come together, make a little club and uh, chat in English once a week or a couple times a week. Yeah, that is fine. So with non-native speakers, practice talking to each other, definitely. Very useful. But when you do it, don't worry about grammar, don't worry about mistakes. Just talk. Just enjoy the conversation. That's all. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, next question. Max. Hello, Max. Max uh, Galtieri uh, says, Hi. Does the VIP course continue every month? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So our VIP program 
is the best way to get new lessons. The VIP, also called ACC, because people who join from Learn Real English, we call it ACC, but it's all the same program, basically. And that is, you get two new lesson sets every month. Every month, something new. And uh, what's our theme this month are, is no, uh, no worries. No worries. Don't worry, basically. Um, and I'll be adding the bonus lesson uh, today or tomorrow for that. So VIP members, they get two lessons. There's a main lesson, which comes from me, and there's a bonus lesson, which comes from Learn Real English, my friends Kristen and Joe and I. And you get both of those every month as a VIP member or ACC member. So the bonus one I'm, I will put on our website, our VIP website, uh, the course site, uh, today or tomorrow, probably. Okay, let's keep going. Twitter questions. What do we have? <laughs> okay, this is a strange question. <laughs> Maya Glasher, number one, asks, do you like bananas or apples? <laughs> well, I like both. Does this have some secret psychological meaning? Which one I answer? Hmm? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't, do I have to choose one? I think they both taste just fine. Bananas and apples. Okay, uh, Mini Cat one says, Hello, AJ, I can't get my new lessons from VIP. There's something wrong uh, with my membership. Okay, anytime you have a problem, this is for everybody, with a course or something like that, just email members at effortlessenglish.org, .org. And our member services person, Peter, will help you. If there's a problem getting into the website, if there's some problem with your payment, anything like that, Peter can help you. He'll figure out the problem, and uh, it might take a few days, so just be patient, but you know, eventually we'll find the problem and fix it. So, no worries. All right, let's keep going. Uh, da, 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 da. Kaula in Istanbul, Turkey, who Tomoe and I met in Istanbul, personally, very nice person, just says, good job, Charlie, thanks for sharing your experience. I agree, my favorite part of the Effortless English show is when our members share their success stories. Because, uh, you know, you know I speak English already because it was easy for me as a baby, I learned English. But it's great to see our, our superstar members like Oscar, like Julia, like Verbal, like Charlie. And you can hear their stories, how they did it. All right, keep going here to Twitter and see what we got. Mm-hmm, sorry about the movement. Okay, here's a good question. Um, uh, I, I Maestro asks, should I use Learn Real English after the original course? What will it give me? Yes, you know, people ask this question all the time. Which course should I do first? Should I do this one or that one? My, my, my honest, deep answer is it doesn't really matter. We don't use a, the kind of normal level system. Generally, people find that Learn Real English is a little more difficult. The English is not really more difficult. The problem is that Learn Real English focuses on real English, casual English, friends talking to each other. And the problem is, the reason it feels difficult is because you don't learn that in school at all. In the textbooks in schools, they don't teach you real English. They teach you school English. In real life, in London, in New York, in San Francisco, in, uh, you know, Perth, Australia, they don't speak with school English. They use real English, street English, casual English most of the time. So that's what Learn Real English teaches you. So which one should you do first? You know, it depends on your focus. You heard Charlie really loved Learn Real English. For him, that was just a great, you know, amazing course for him. I, I generally recommend people start with Power English as their first course, but you can also start with Learn Real English, or you could get both and sort of listen to them at the same time, alternating them each week. Up to you. After those, then if you still want to keep going, then you can join the VIP program or ACC. 
And if you specifically want business English, then business English conversations is also quite useful. All right, so let's keep going here. Oh, yeah, Mark Pretty, uh, also from France. Uh, he says, yeah, we met in Hong Kong last summer, and I just want to say hello to Charlie. Yeah, this is an amazing story. So uh, Tomoe and I, were uh, we went on vacation last year in Hong Kong just for a week, and we were just walking around, and suddenly uh, Mark saw us walking in Hong Kong. He was on vacation also from France, and he said, oh, hello, and he, he, he surprised me. And he started talking, and, uh, and, and we chatted for just a few minutes, and then he walked away. And I didn't even realize really who he was until we walked away. We walked away, and I suddenly realized, oh, that's Mark from VIP. <laughs> so it, I was just confused and so surprised. Uh, so I enjoy meeting our members. I've, this has happened to me a few times now, different parts of the world, where one of our members or fans, crew, will come up and say hello. So if you see me somewhere walking around, Please come say hello, because uh, I travel a lot, so you might see me anywhere. All right, let's see. Uh, Paquito Silver from Mexico City uh, asks, how much does it cost to become a VIP member? It's $37 per month for VIP, and you can join that on our uh, website, effortlessenglishclub.com. So Mexico City, uh, Tomo and I also visited Mexico City a few years ago. Maybe uh, I'd like to go back to Mexico. Actually, I'd like to I, I'd like to go and do a whole big tour of uh, Mexico, Central America, and South America. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, okay, here's a little question. Barbell asks, "I am at a meeting or I'm in a meeting? What's the difference?" Not really much difference. Same meaning. I'm at a meeting. In a meeting. You know, in a meeting has a little more of a feeling that it's happening and you're inside that room. At a meeting just means you're attending the meeting, but you know with prepositions sometimes it's very con tough because there are no rules. There aren't really logical rules you can remember. Which which one should I use? Is it at or in or on? I you know native speakers sometimes we also forget. You know we have to think about it. And how do we think about it? We just say it to ourselves and we decide which one sounds correct. Let me give you a simple example of this with islands sometimes. We were living in Maui. See, I'm already, I said in Maui, the island of Maui, which is in Hawaii, the Hawaiian Islands. Now, sometimes do you say, um, I live in Maui or do I live on Maui? And, and so I say both sometimes. I have to stop and think, is it in Maui or on Maui? <laughs> Usually it's actually on Maui because when we talk about an island, for some reason we say, I'm on the island. We don't say, I'm in the island. On the other hand, for a lo for a uh, a location like uh, California, we don't say I'm on California. We say I'm in California, right? I'm within the borders of California. I'm within the state. So for Maui, it's a little confusing. Maui is is an, is the name of an island, but Maui also has the feeling it's the it's a county. It's a region. So. <laughs> it's, it can be a little confusing even for an American. Am I in Maui? Am I on Maui? And usually it's on Maui. It's actually because you're on the island. You're in Hawaii because Hawaii is a state. I am currently in Hawaii, but I'm on the island of Hawaii, on the, on the island of Maui. So these are, these are small things. Don't worry too much about them. You'll, you'll get a feeling for these kind of prepositional phrases you get a feeling for them just by reading more, listening more. There's no logical rule you can study that will tell you which one will always be correct because even native speakers sometimes are confused. So just relax about it. Everyone will understand you. It doesn't matter which one you say. And eventually you'll start to get a feeling of which one's more correct. Okay, here uh, I'll, I'll answer one, uh, two more questions, two more Twitter questions, and then we got to finish. So... Yevgeny E. asked, AJ, did you read the book The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins? And he says, Charlie's a cool guy. Yes, he is. I have not read The Hunger Games, but I, uh, I've seen the movies, the, the first two movies, which were interesting. Uh, th they would be great novels to read. for If your level was good enough, 
If you could read The Hunger Games fairly easily, not too difficult, then by all means, definitely read The Hunger Games. Uh, reading novels is a, is a great way to build vocabulary. It's even better if you can also listen to the audiobook version. You could read and listen at the same time. That's the best. Because then you get the audio vocabulary and you get the pronunciation as you're listening to the audiobook. So that's perfect. Sometimes you can't do it. Just read the book. It's fine also. All right, last Twitter question, and then we got to go. And Evgeny also says, welcome to Russia someday. Uh, okay, so, uh, <laughs> okay, so 1947 Roswell says, it's cool to hear that you, me, are the same in public and in private life. It's not so common. I guess I am. Yeah. I'm probably more, uh, I, uh, I'm more energetic when I'm uh, speaking to a big group. So this is probably the one difference between my private and public life is that um, sometimes if you see a video of me teaching, you know, a big group of people, like in Vietnam last year, 3,000 people, you know, I'm super energized. I'm not always like that. <laughs> I can't, pretty calm usually in most of my life. I, but uh, I get very excited when I'm teaching or speaking. I'm very high energy. I'm high energy when I exercise and other things too, but... You know, in life we need some balance. But generally, yes, I'm very friendly. Business English conversations, doesn't matter. If you know me, if you're a fan, you're a member, come say hi and I'll, I'd love to chat with you. So. All right, so those are our Twitter questions for today. I'll answer a few more Twitter questions when we're done. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess... Our last segment here is the news, Effortless English News, what's happening. Already mentioned, really. Our original course should be ready, open again, I think next week. When the original course is open again, I will notify on Facebook. I'll do a Facebook post on Twitter, and I will send emails. So join our email course newsletter. So I'll send that out with a link where you can get the original course again. Now, if you already have the original course, of course, don't buy it again. But if you have not had it, it's the first course I ever recorded in my apartment in San Francisco and uh, had a lot of popular lessons in that course. So, coming very soon. Uh, and then finally, uh, next week for the Effortless English Show, I will announce the time. We have a class. We're taking a class next Sunday in the morning, so I may need to reschedule. I mean, maybe I'll do this on Monday next week. Uh, we'll see. The, the time will be a little different Monday or Sunday next week. I'm not sure. We're, we're just, in San Francisco, we're trying to find a long-term place to stay. When we find a, another place to stay, I can have a regular schedule with the same time each week. But until then, the, the times might change a little bit the next few weeks. So just be patient. Look on Twitter. That's where I will put information about each show and the times and everything. All right. So uh, I always end with our code, our mission, and our values. Because Effortless English has a deeper purpose. Our main purpose, of course, is to help you speak English powerfully and confidently. In addition, we have a code. This is how we treat each other in our crew, in our community, our family of Effortless English, which includes Learn Real English and Business English Conversations. We have just three codes of conduct. Number one, we do the best we can. We do our best. Yes, we will make mistakes, but we do our best. Number two, we do the right thing. We're kind to each other. We're honest. We're, we're nice. We don't insult each other. We don't lie and cheat and steal simple. Number three, we show each other we care. We show each other we care. Show other people on Twitter, on Facebook, in our forums, in our VIP site, face to face. Show you care. Say something nice to somebody. Encourage them. Be helpful. Show you care. That's our code of conduct, our code. Just three. Very simple. Our mission, our deeper mission, to explore new opportunities for growth, to bring confidence, vitality, 
and happiness to people all over the world and to boldly go where we have never gone before. That's a mission of lifelong learning, lifelong contribution. Finally, our values. Our first value is devotion to that mission. We're all doing this mission together. It's not just me. It's our whole Effortless English crew, family, and community. Enthusiasm is our second value. Being excited about learning and excited about life. Contribution, number three, contribution means contributing to other people. Number four, constant and never-ending improvement. It means we're always trying to improve. As long as we are alive, we're trying to improve. We will never be perfect, but we can always improve. Uh, number five is self-reliance. means we rely on ourselves. We take responsibility for our own lives. We don't look for other people to solve our own problems. We do it ourselves. And number six is persistence. Persistence. We keep going. We keep going. We don't quit when something is important. Yes, you might quit some things in life, but if something is very important to you, to us, we don't quit. We keep going. We keep trying. Keep working. And finally, number seven, positive leadership, our last value, positive leadership. We all are leaders, every one of us, by being positive, by being helpful, by following the mission and the code. We can inspire other people. We can encourage other people. In that way, we're all leaders, positive leaders. So that's it. Uh, next week, we will do the show again, live from San Francisco, California. I, I don't know the time, but I'll tell you the time again on Twitter and on our website. So. I will see you next week. Thank you, Charlie, for being on the show. Thank you, everyone who watched, all the people who asked questions on Twitter. I love you, Effortless English community, and I will see you next time. Bye for now. See you again. Bye-bye.